All right, so I just got out of a little pre-screening of the new Power Rangers movie, and I'm about to do a red light review. So just know, spoilers ahead! And again, this is a red light review. I'm going to be reviewing the movie, talk about the plot, some of the stuff that I saw, likes, dislikes, all that stuff, at red lights on my way home. So if you're worried about spoilers, I suggest not watching this until after you've seen the movie yourself, because there will be spoilers abound. Now, the Power Rangers movie is one I was really excited to do a red light review on. And it's not because I'm like a 90s kid looking for nostalgia. It's because it has one of my earliest masturbatory memories. I don't know if you caught the end of that, but yes, the Power Rangers are responsible for one of my earliest masturbatory memories. And you'll see why in just a second. Ah, that's right. Good old Amy Jo Johnson, the Pink Power Ranger. One of my earliest masturbatory memories growing up as a kid. It's almost as if Cupid himself was shooting that bow that she has in her hands and struck me right in the heart, and it went straight to my boner. Now, she wasn't the first person I masturbated to. She was just the first one that I had, like, a scheduled appointment to jerk it. Wake up Saturday morning, watch the X-Men cartoons, jerk it to the Pink Power Ranger. All right, now that all that personal stuff's out of the way, let's talk about the actual movie. So most of the Power Rangers are pretty much unknown, unnamed actors and actresses I've never heard of or seen before. Uh, Jason, the Red Power Ranger, looks just like the next Zac Efron. All right, so Elizabeth Banks plays Rita Repulsa, the main villain of the movie. And then wouldn't you know it, Walter White himself makes an appearance as Zordon. Woo! It's almost as if when he died in Breaking Bad, he went straight to heaven and they got transported back down to Earth to be inside some sort of a TV screen to talk to the new Power Rangers. It's kind of weird because it's 2017 and as Zordon, I think he looked just as blurry in the movie as he did as he did in the TV show. So you know like those weird science project things where you put your hand or your face in and it's like a bunch of pins and it forms the shape of whatever you're putting inside? Well, he looks just like that, but he talks uh, and he's Zordon. Uh, anyways, let's talk about the, uh, the actual plot of the movie. Now, if you've seen any episode of Muddy Mover Power Rangers, you've pretty much seen this movie. It's just a, a longer version of that. So obviously, these, this band of misfit high school pseudo-responsible, but also rebellious and irresponsible teens who are also perfectly ethnically diverse discover that they are Power Rangers by finding these coins. So they learn they have to save the world or the universe from evil Rita Repulsa. And they have about 11 days to get ready to do so. And now Rita Repulsa is a very interesting character. She's building a monster out of gold that she is collecting by stealing the teeth of transients. True story. That's right. It looks like the Power Rangers' first monster they're going to fight is the monster built from Hobo's gold teeth fillings. Youch. So just in true Power Ranger fashion, they end up discovering that they can be a great team, they can work together, and then they get to drive around in these crazy dinosaur robots. Now, the Power Rangers movie does a couple things. Right at the beginning, they explain why the Power Rangers ride around in robot uh, dinosaurs, and, and it also explains why the dinosaurs went extinct. And if you didn't know, it's because Zordon called in the meteorite to kill Rita Repulsa so we could save the galaxy. All right, now to tell you how I feel about the movie. It's not the best news, but it's not the worst news if you're a Power Rangers fan. It is definitely a movie targeted towards teens and young adults. There's not a whole lot of adult humor, even though there is a bestiality joke right at the beginning. Personally, I was kind of disappointed in it. It was kind of slow moving. There's a lot of build up to try to get these characters to connect with one another and less giant robot fights. Because if I'm watching fucking Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, I want to see the fucking Zords or whatever they're called and the Megazords fucking fight giant monsters and smash shit up. It kind of starts out like a weaker version of the Breakfast Club, but instead of dancing around and like smoking weed, they learn martial arts and become superheroes. However, I was not impressed with Goldar or whatever the name of the monster that Rita Repulsa builds out of the, the homeless guy's uh, gold fillings and other gold she finds. It looked like uh, if the Terminator 2 was made out of Ferro Rocher wrappers and they combined that with the Jolly Green Giant, that was the monster they fought. I just thought it could have been done a little bit better. I mean, all in all, I would say out of 10, I'd give the movie like 5 stars out of 10. Uh, it was just... 
if you're looking for some of that 90s nostalgia and you were a big Power Rangers fan growing up, uh, you'll probably enjoy the movie. Uh, I felt it was a little too slow, not enough giant monsters fighting. Like, I felt like they were reaching to try to grab the grab hold of the audience like the Avengers and all the Marvel movies did, and I don't think they accomplished that. It's definitely not a flick I would rush out to see immediately. Um, I take my time, you know, check it out after it's been out for a little while. Maybe even red box it or just pay-per-view it once it comes out on. And that's really all I have to say about the Power Rangers movie. That's the it. That's it. I'm home. I'm in my driveway. That's the end of my red light review of the Power Rangers movie. Thanks for watching. Make sure you share. Because don't forget, sharing is caring. So if you care about me and you care about my videos, make sure you share them. Tell a friend. Tell your grandma. Thanks for watching.